This is an educational podcast or educast created by Jim House, Assistant Professor of Computer Science and Communication Arts Technology at Allegheny College of Maryland. For more information about Allegheny College of Maryland, please visit us on the web at allegheny.edu. Computer manufacturers typically try to entice consumers by configuring computers with a variety of storage devices, such as a floppy disk drive, hard disk drive, and some sort of CD or DVD drive. What's the point of having so many storage devices? Well, as it turns out, none of today's storage technologies is perfect. One technology might provide fast access to data, but it might also be susceptible to problems that could potentially wipe out all of your data. A different technology might be more dependable, but it might have the disadvantage of being relatively slow to access that data. Smart shoppers make sure their new computers are equipped with a variety of storage devices. Informed computer owners understand the strengths and weaknesses of each storage technology so that they can use these devices with maximum effectiveness. In this podcast, you'll learn many secrets that can make you a smart storage technology buyer and owner. The storage technologies you'll learn about are now used in a variety of devices from digital cameras to player pianos, so an understanding of storage technology can be useful outside the boundaries of personal computing. A data storage system has two main components, a storage medium and a storage device. A storage medium, or storage media is the plural, is the disk, the tape, the CD, the DVD, the paper, or other substance that contains the data. A storage device is the mechanical apparatus that records and retrieves data from the storage medium. Storage devices include floppy disk drives, zip drives, hard disk drives, tape drives, CD drives, and DVD drives. The term storage technology refers to the storage device and the media it uses. Hard disks, floppy disks, and tape storage technologies can be classified as magnetic storage, which stores data by magnetizing microscopic particles on the disk or tape surface. The particles retain their magnetic orientation until the orientation is changed, thereby making disks and tapes fairly permanent but modifiable storage media. A read-write head mechanism in the disk drive reads and writes the magnetized particles that represent the data. Data stored magnetically can be easily changed or deleted simply by changing the magnetic orientation of the appropriate particles on the disk surface. This feature of magnetic storage provides lots of flexibility for editing data and reusing areas of the storage media containing unneeded data. Data stored on magnetic media such as floppy disks can be altered by magnetic fields, dust, mold, smoke, particles, heat, and mechanical problems with the storage device. Placing a magnet on a floppy disk, for example, is a sure way of losing data. Magnetic media gradually lose their magnetic charge, resulting in lost data. Some experts estimate that the reliable lifespan of data stored on magnetic media is about three years. They recommend that you refresh your data every two years by recopying it. CD and DVD storage technologies can be classified as optical storage, which stores data as microscopic light and dark spots on the disk surface. The dark spots are known as pits, while the lighter, non-pitted surface areas of the disk are called lands. Optical storage gets its name because data is read using a laser light and is possible to see the data through a high-powered microscope. The transition between pits and lands is interrupted as ones and zeros and represents the data. An optical storage device uses a low-powered laser light to read the data stored on the optical disk. The surface of an optical disk is coated with clear plastic, making the disk quite durable and less susceptible to environmental damage than data recorded on a magnetic media. An optical disk, such as a CD, is not susceptible to humidity, fingerprints, dust, magnets, or spilled soft drinks, and its useful life is estimated to be more than 200 years. Each storage technology has advantages and disadvantages. If one storage system was perfect, we wouldn't need so many disk and tape drives connected to our computers. To compare storage devices, it's useful to apply the criteria of versatility, durability, speed, and capacity. Some storage devices can access data from only one type of medium. More versatile devices can access data from several different media. A floppy disk drive, for example, can access only floppy disk drives, whereas a DVD drive can access computer DVDs, DVD movies, audio CDs, computer CDs, and CDRs. Most storage technologies are susceptible to damage from mishandling or other environmental factors such as heat and moisture. Some technologies are more susceptible than others to damage that could cause data loss. Optical and solid-state technologies tend to be less susceptible than magnetic technologies. Quick access to data is important, so fast storage devices are preferred over slower devices. Access time is the average time it takes a computer to locate data on the storage media and read it. Access time for a personal computer storage device such as disk drive is measured in milliseconds or thousands of a second. 
Lower numbers indicate faster access time. For example, a drive with a 6 millisecond access time is faster than a drive with an 11 millisecond access time. Access time is best for random access devices. Random access, also called direct access, is the ability of a device to jump directly to the requested data. A tape drive, on the other hand, must use slower sequential access by reading through all the data from the beginning of the tape to the end. The advantage of random access becomes clear when you consider how much faster and easier it is to locate a song on a CD, which is random access, than on a cassette tape, which is more like sequential access. Data transfer rate is the amount of data a storage device can move per second from the storage media to the computer. Higher numbers indicate faster transfer rates. For example, a CD-ROM drive with a 600 kbps or kilobytes per second data transfer rate is faster than one with a 300 kbps transfer rate. In today's computing environment, higher capacity is almost always preferred. Storage capacity is the maximum amount of data that can be stored on a storage medium and is measured in kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, or even terabytes. One of the oldest storage technologies, floppy disks are classified as magnetic storage because data is stored by magnetizing microscopic particles on the disk's surface. A floppy disk is a round piece of flexible mylar plastic covered with a thin layer of magnetic oxide and sealed inside a protective casing. If you break open the disk casing, something you should never do unless you want to ruin the disk, you would see that the mylar disk inside is a thin and literally floppy. Floppy disk technology is used for standard high density and double density disks as well as zip disks. A high-density, double-density floppy disk features a write-protect window. When you open the window, the disk is write-protected, which means that the computer cannot write data on the disk. Although it sounds like a useful feature, the write-protect window doesn't do much to protect your data from accidental erasures or changes. A zip disk is a special high-density capacity floppy disk available in 100, 250, and 750 megabyte versions. Zip disks and their drives are manufactured by iOmega. A zip drive does not read standard high-density or double-density floppy disks, and zip disks cannot be read by a standard floppy disk drive. The amount of data that a disk stores depends on its density. Disk density refers to the closeness and the size of the magnetic particles on the disk surface. The higher the disk density, the smaller the magnetic particles on the disk surface and the more data it can store. Hard disk technology is the preferred type of main storage for most computer systems for three reasons. First, it provides a lot of storage capacity. Second, it provides the fastest access to files. Third, the hard disk is economical. Incredibly, a hard disk typically stores millions of times more data than a floppy disk, but a hard disk drive might cost only three times as much as a floppy disk drive. A hard disk is one or more platters and their associated read-write heads. A hard disk platter is a flat, rigid disk made of aluminum or glass and coated with magnetic iron oxide particles. Each platter has its own read-write head that hovers over the surface to read data. Hard disks are not as durable as many other storage technologies. The read-write heads in a hard disk cover a microscopic distance above the disk surface. If a read-write head runs into a dust particle or some other contaminant on the disk, it might cause what's called a head crash, which damages some of the data on the disk. To help prevent contaminants from contacting the platter and causing head crashes, a hard disk is sealed in its case. A head crash can also be triggered by jarring the hard disk while it's in use. Although hard disks have become considerably more rugged in recent years, you should still try and handle and transport them with care. A tape backup is a copy of the data on a hard disk which is stored on magnetic tape and used to restore lost data. Tape drive manufacturers produce several types of drives and each requires a specific type of tape. A tape backup device is relatively inexpensive and can simplify the task of reconstructing lost data. A backup tape can hold the entire contents of a hard disk. If the hard disk drive fails, the data can be copied from the tape to any functional hard disk. Tape drives are primarily used on business computers. A tape is a sequential rather than a random access storage medium. Essentially, data is arranged as a long sequence of bits and begins at one end of the tape and stretches to the other end. The beginning and the end of each file are marked with special header labels. To locate a file, the tape drive must start at one end of the tape and read through all the data until it finds the right header label. A tape can contain hundreds, or in the case of a mainframe, thousands of feet of tape. Access time is measured in seconds, not milliseconds as for a hard disk drive. Tape is simply too slow to be practical as your computer's main storage device. Its pokey nature doesn't however diminish its effectiveness as a backup device. When you make a backup, you're simply streaming lots of data onto a tape. You don't need to locate specific data or jump back and forth between different files. A sequential device is just fine for this sort of work. 
Today, most computers come equipped with some type of optical drive, a CD drive or a DVD drive. The underlying technology for CD and DVD drives is similar, but storage capacities differ. A computer CD drive is based on the same technology as an audio CD player. A CD, or compact disc, was originally designed to hold 74 minutes of recorded music. This capacity provides 650 megabytes of storage space for computer data. Later improvements in CD standards increased the capacity to 80 minutes of music or 700 megabytes of data. DVD, digital video, or digital versatile disc, is a variation of CD technology that was originally designed as an alternative to VCRs, but was quickly adopted by the computer industry to store data. A computer's DVD drive can read discs that contain computer data as well as discs that contain DVD movies. Originally designed to provide enough storage capacity for a full-length movie, a DVD holds much more than a CD. The capacity of a DVD is about 4.7 gigabytes, or the equivalent of 4,700 megabytes. Compared with the 650 to 750 megabytes on a CD, a double layer DVD has two recordable layers on the same side and can store up to 8.5 gigabytes of data. Several CD and DVD formats are currently popular for use in personal computers. CDDA, or Compact Disc Digital Audio, DVD Video, Digital Versatile Disc Video, CD-ROM, Compact Disc Read-Only Memory, DVD-ROM, Digital Versatile Disc Read-Only Memory, CDR, Compact Disc Recordable, DVD-R, Digital Versatile Disc Recordable, CDRW, Compact Disc Rewritable, and DVD-RW, Digital Versatile Disc Rewritable. Several types of solid-state storage are available to today's consumers. A USB flash drive, such as Sony's Microvolt, is a portable storage device featuring a built-in connector that plugs directly into the computer's USB port. A USB flash drive requires no card reader, making it easy to transport from one computer to the other. Nicknamed pen drives or keychain drives, USB flash drives are about the size of a highlighter pen and so durable that you can literally carry them on your key ring. Compact flash or CF cards are about the size of a matchbook and provide high storage capacities and access speeds. Compact flash cards include a built-in controller that reads and writes data within the solid-state grid. Multimedia cards, or MMC, offer solid-state storage in a package about the size of a postage stamp. Initially used in mobile phones and pagers, use of multimedia cards has spread to digital cameras and MP3 players. Secure digital or SD cards are based on multimedia card technology, but feature significantly faster data transfer rates and include cryptographic security protection for copyrighted data and music. Smart media cards were originally called solid-state floppy disk cards because they look much like a miniature floppy disk. Unlike other popular solid-state storage, smart media cards do not include a built-in controller, which means that the smart media reader manages the read-write process. These cards are the least durable of the solid-state storage media and should be handled with care. This has been an Educast podcast brought to you by Jim House and Allegheny College of Maryland.